Warning, the virtually nonstop stream of profanity hasn't abated yet. This week's episode of The Scathing Atheist is brought to you by LootCrate.com, BlueApron.com, and by the President-elect's new Secret Service detail, or what he's calling the SS Donald, and they're now accepting submissions for his nickname. We were thinking Great White Grope, but other ideas are welcome. Email or tweet anytime. And now, The Scathing Atheist. This is Brad from the Writer's Beard Podcast. Due to the fact that Noah will occasionally drop references to Ready Player One, or that anyone enjoyed that book after finishing it, is proof enough that we did in fact evolve from filthy monkey men. It's Thursday. It's November 17th. And the only thing worse than angry bigots is happy bigots. Oh, tell me about it. I'm No Illusions. I'm Eli Bosnick. I'm Heath Enright. And from New York, New York, and Secret Lair, Pennsylvania, this is Scathing Atheist. On this week's episode, Donald Trump announces a brand new skull-shaped White House... He also makes a few other decisions based on skull shape. And Reince Priebus finally gets to be on a list where he's not the worst person. But first, the diatribe. See, this is when my job gets tough. You know, the diatribe is usually where I vent rage, and obviously I've got plenty of rage to vent, but I can't just turn this show into me bitching about Donald Trump every week, right? I I figure last week you'll forgive me for an atypically non-religious diatribe. I mean, obviously I'm going to bitch about the election this past week, right? And that's what I want to bitch about now. But I also know that the point of this show isn't politics. I can't just come out here for the next four years and bitch about Donald Trump every week. I mean, not as like a physical limitation. I definitely could do that, but that's not to say that I should. You know, everybody else had to put their shit together and go to work the next day, and so do I. So I spent most of this past week trying to get myself to be pissed about something other than Donald Trump for the purposes of this diatribe. And I've got to admit, it wasn't easy. Everything just kept kind of winding back to the fact that my country will now be run by a man whose idea of a synonym is putting very at the beginning of the original word. It didn't matter what the subject was. When I closed my eyes, I saw Donald Trump addressing Congress and asking why nobody had shown him the alien bodies yet. But I soldiered on for you. For you, our dear listeners, who have been with me through the best and worst times of my life, who have been there for us whenever we've needed them, who've answered every call we've ever made, for you, I've managed to set aside my omnipresent outrage at the election of Donald fucking Trump for the remainder of this diatribe and find something else to bitch about. So here goes. Can you believe that Mike fucking Pence is going to be the new vice president? Holy shit. Let's not forget to spend a little time terrified of that prospect because you don't want Donald Trump around a nuclear button for the same reason you don't want Buster Keaton around it. But Mike Pence isn't some bumbling clown that said like all the angry white people stuff on a campaign trail just to get elected. This is a competent politician that as near as we can tell from his public record actually believes this shit. Now, look, obviously, there's a pretty high chance Pence winds up the president. Yeah, I'm not saying I think Eli's autonomous robotic assassin badgers are actually going to work, but I think we can all agree our new president will probably have a scandal or two. You know, Donald Trump just kind of screams step down in disgrace, doesn't he? Or more like forced out in disgrace. But one way or the other, I feel like he's going to grab Angela Merkel's pussy or something. And the next thing you know, we're playing hail to the chief for the ghost of Beaver Cleaver. But even if nothing like that happens, right, the vice presidency isn't the joke of an office it used to be, especially when you're working under a president that seems completely uninterested in shit like presiding. You know, I mean, there's no theoretical limit to how much he could push off onto his Veep. And something tells me you don't have to be exactly a Jedi master to manipulate the mind of Donald J. Trump. 
you know, Pence could probably get away with shit like, well, I heard Ryan's calling you a little bitch if he needed the upper hand in an internal dispute. So who is this man who is now a heartbeat away from the presidency? Well, the fact that he was willing to take the job of Donald Trump's running mate tells you he's long since shot his own political career in the balls. But you'll most likely remember him as the Indiana governor who got behind the nation's most restrictive anti-gay legislation. And since he joined the Trump ticket, you very likely saw him delivering his impassioned anti-evolution, it's just a theory speech in the hollowed halls of Congress. But that's just a tip of the guano mound when it comes to this country's new second in command. First of all, I don't think we can overstate how profoundly misogynistic this guy is. I mean, he's not Donald Trump, so he does have that going for him. But we're talking about a guy who spent the late 90s railing against the dangers of working mothers and daycare. Not the late 1890s, mind you. These last ones, the ones we just had. He also railed against Disney's Mulan for its subversive pro-women in the military message. And that doesn't even make the top 10 of the most sexist shit he's said about non-penist soldiers, by the way. Hey, you probably already knew about his radically anti-abortion views, what with him promising to overturn Roe versus Wade if elected to the vice presidency, more specifically, a type of the vice presidency that allows him to overturn Supreme Court rulings. But his record shows this isn't some bullshit line to drum up evangelical support or something. This is really who he is. As governor of Indiana, he enacted a law that required funerals for abortion. He made it illegal to abort a fetus because of a disability. And to really make that stick, the same law made doctors legally liable for wrongful death if they performed an abortion that later turned out to be because of disability. Now, the Supreme Court struck all this shit down, but this may very well be the guy making the next SCOTUS appointments. Hell, his entire administration could be described as a fight against reproductive rights if it wasn't for all the anti-gay shit he tacked on, too. And that might be his most prominent legacy. You know, his signature act as Indiana's governor was to protect businesses that wanted to discriminate against gay people. Now, they had to be religious about it. That was important to him. You couldn't go hating people without an imaginary wizard justifying it. But as long as you had that, you could discriminate against whoever the hell you want if he got his fucking way. That was the key to his law, right? Technically, it made it legal for anybody to discriminate against anybody. And that was a price Mike Pence was willing to pay in an effort to protect fag-free dining for him and his family. This is a man who advocates conversion therapy, denies global warming, denies evolution, denies that smoking causes cancer. And the only thing standing between him and the Oval Office is a 70-year-old out-of-shape fat guy whose blood pressure hits critical levels when somebody sends him a middle finger emoji. Be very afraid, America, because at this point, four fucking years of Donald Trump is the best we can hope for. They're talking about your Jesus. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you a special news bulletin. Joining me for headlines tonight are two white guys who were for Trump all along, right? Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick. Fellas, are you ready to hail the glorious leader? Uh, I'm going to wait and see what happens first. I mean, if he gets rid of the white tax, I'm definitely on board. He will so, get rid of the white tax. We'll see. I, I have always worn this much self-tanner, for the record. You, you don't know. It's a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, obviously, there's still a lot to talk about. But before we dig in, we're going to take a few minutes to tell you about this week's first sponsor, Loot Crate. For many listeners, it's been a really hard week. And for many of their parents and racist aunts who have spent the last eight years posting minion memes calling Obama names... It's a time for unity. So in that spirit, we decided to invite Steve Bannon, head of Breitbart, and President-elect's new chief White House strategist for this week's Loot Crate ad. Oh, dude, why? Hi, fella. Thanks for having me. Hi, oh. Nope. Nope. We're not. He smells like sulfur. I sure do. I sure do. Uh, okay, so for those who don't know Loot Crate, they offer an epic range of pop culture items for less than $20 a month. Mm, sounds boring. That's why we have Bright Crate. Bright Crate offers a selection of alt-right collectibles for just $350 a month. Wow, that's that's expensive. Yeah, get used to it. Bitcoin's the future. No, nope. it's it's not. Mm, set it on my paper. Uh, all right, Steve, Um, we were talking about Loot Crate, though. They have epic gear. Housewares, collectibles, it's really cool. Ah, yeah, so does Bright Crate. I mean, look at this. We got a white sheet it, it, that's for your bed, and it comes with its own wizard hat. That's cool, right? 
Way that, better than the loot. I don't think that's the kind of no. wizard that we're... Oh, uh, okay. Well, you know how Loot Crate has Loot Crate DX for like a fancier, bigger box with even more loot? Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they do. Yeah, well, we got that too. Look. The, the Breitbart DX box has a, has a phone preloaded with 150 Peppy the Frog Twitter accounts. Yeah, that sounds really awful, Steve. I, I, I'm pretty sure our listeners would rather be the envy of their friends and get their 100% exclusive crates at lootcrate.com slash atheist and enter our code atheist to save $3 off of any new subscription than a box of, um, is, is that an armband? Maybe. Oh, God. All right. Uh, Moving on. Getting ready for November's enchanting theme. Magical. Loot Crate has cast a powerful ancient spell to deliver you November's crate featuring bewitching items from Doctor Strange, fantastic beasts and where to find them, big trouble in little China, and so much more. Do not wait. You have until the 19th at 9 p.m. Pacific to subscribe for November's crate. When it's over, it's over. No more crates. Go to lootcrate.com slash atheist and enter our code atheist to save $3 off any new subscription today. You want to try on the hood? You're a big tall fella like the shaved head. I get it. I absolutely do not. And now back to the headlines. In our lead story tonight, bigots, idiots, and misogynists across the country and across the world are beating their chests and dancing in delight at last week's electoral upset. After the American voters' surprising decision to just give the ring to Sauron and build a wall around the Shire to keep those hairy-footed bastards where they belong, several of America's worst humans took to the airwaves, radio waves, and series of tube waves to express their delight. And we figured we could open up the headlines this week by highlighting a few of our favorites. Yes. Okay, so first up to gloat was evil magician and Uri Geller Halloween mask lookalike, Uri Geller, who, if you'll remember, (laughs) this year predicted Donald Trump would win because his name has 11 (laughs) letters, and 11 is a powerful number. Powerful. Yeah, yeah. We've had a bunch of 11-letter presidents before. Um, Plus, 1-1 is binary code for three. (gasps) So you got JFK, LBJ, FDR, a bunch of them that Geller never even thought of. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. You're good at this. You should start a Facebook page. You should should embarrass yourself on Johnny Carson. (laughs) And with a magic trick with a slightly lower than 50-50 chance going for him, what else could he do except go on Facebook and claim that this wasn't just a slightly lower than (laughs) 50-50 chance? Saying, quote, there is more to this world than meets the eye. It really is possible that human beings can just know something is going to happen. Yeah, more than meets the eye. Transformers. Optimus Prime. 11 is a prime number he's not just making shit up that's mad <laughs> that's real all right next up we got some words of wisdom from the amish wolverine himself ken ham according to the least successful theme park owner in america the trump victory is clear evidence that the god of the bible created the universe six thousand years ago apparently i mean sure because he killed everyone then too i get it he's, he's getting us ready <laughs> he's into this kind how of do you shit. make boats <laughs> legs around the land yeah yeah so uh that's why he posted the following on his facebook page the day after the election quote what happened how could polls be so wrong answer god not the media is in control end quote and then he cited romans thirteen one, which says the authorities that exist are appointed by god which is interesting because during the primaries last year Ken Ham said, quote, Donald Trump does not promote the Christian worldview, end quote. So I guess you'd call this a post hoc victory lap. Yeah. Yeah. Now he's a Cubs fan all of a sudden. Fuck you. (laughs) Absolutely not. Well, seeing as Ohio went for Trump, I am also now a Cubs fan and (laughs) an earthquake (laughs) fan. Anything that hurts people in Ohio, it's fine. (laughs) That's where the Cubs are from. And, of course, also (laughs) dictating a thank you note to Jesus was one Michelle Bachman, who you may remember as the person staring off into space like she's not really sure who you are or what you are, but knows she doesn't want to look at you. Uh, that's a lot of women. I'm going to need you to be more specific. No, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the one that's always threatening Madge. 
And your little dog, too. That one. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Right, right. Oh, Heath Enright. Got it. No, no, no. This one is the one that was the four-term congresswoman from Minnesota's 4th District where she made a name for herself warning that gay people are trying to legalize pedophilia, Obama is an Islamic jihadist, and the end times are just around the corner, thus all the tornadoes and hurricanes and whatnot. That one. Oh, oh, that Michelle Bachman. But to be fair, those are now just the mainstream ideas of the president-elect's cabinet. I don't really understand. Yeah, no, the, those. the core... Campaign Mission platform. Statement. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Anyway, Job so security. Buckman not only <laughs> celebrated Trump's victory this week, but also took a bit of credit for it. As she pointed out after the fact, the precise moment when one poll tracking website switched their odds to favor Trump coincided within five minutes of exactly with the moment that her and illiterate version of Dan Carlin, if he was molested by nuns constantly as a child, David Barton went live on a Christian TV network. And since we can all oh. agree that if the New York Times had switched their prediction at any other time, Bachman would have admitted that Jesus doesn't love her and there is no God. I think it's only fair that we <laughs> take this as proof of the power of prayer, specifically the power of Michelle Bachman's prayer. But still, guys, guys. What if Michelle Bachman does have the power of prayer? It would explain so much. <laughs> <laughs> Everything except the stare, actually, yeah. And in TB Determined news tonight, not all Christians were so optimistic last week. Nigerian prophet, a phrase that should be as chilling to our audience as affordable surgeon, TB <laughs> Joshua, took to Facebook to make his prediction. He said, quote, Ten days ago, I saw the new president of America with a narrow win. The new president will be facing several challenges over many issues. Okay, so far, so good. Uh, I mean, I feel like handful of challenges would have been more accurate. But yeah, that's pretty good. It just depends good. on the size of the hands. <laughs> Including passing bills, attempts to possibly pass a vote of no confidence on the new president. Whatever that is. I'm in. I, I don't we know don't what that is. But like, that. Is that a thing? I want to do it. I'm <laughs> Not <in>. here. <laughs> oh, okay. The boat of the new president will be rocked. Uh, pretty sure that was a cop car, but okay, okay, sorry, getting, getting distracted again. <laughs> By the way, in order not to keep you in suspense, liking the Columbo moment here, sorry, again, back, back to the quote, back to the quote. What I frankly saw is a woman, end quote. Huh. And the president had her by the pussy. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, wait, wait, to be fair... That all seems pretty realistic, and I'm willing to give him the benefit of the doubt, especially if he had, like, just had a vision of the president-elect's micropenis. Easy mistake. You know? <laughs> Hillary could have a dominant clitoris. Very likely. Or, though, he, he was compliment. just seeing Liz Warren <laughs> in 2020. I'll literally convert to Christianity and give TB Joshua a rusty trombone right now, if he can guarantee that for me. Stop offering people rusty trombones for Liz Warren 2020, Heath. <laughs> <laughs> You said you could make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, TB Joshua has since taken down the Facebook post, inspiring pollsters all over the world to wish they could do the same. Just yeah, right. Nate Silver destroying servers with a hammer as we speak and focusing on the amount of letters and names because why the fuck <laughs> not? <laughs> right. And in fetus of strength news tonight. We have two stories about anti-choice Christian assholes saying and doing horrible things as part of their ongoing crusade to eventually outlaw menstruation. So who would you like to talk about first? The podcasting pastor who told a grieving man that he caused his wife's miscarriage by watching porn or the New York priest who released a video on Election Eve during which he asked voters to elect Donald Trump while posing with an aborted fetus, which sounds like a more appropriate starting point. <laughs> mm, well, I don't like either option, so I think I'm not going to choose and let a Nazi take over. <laughs> Is that what we're supposed to do this year? No, I mean, I mean look, 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 I also posed with an aborted fetus on this election eve, but that was for our Christmas card. So go with the podcaster. Go with the podcaster. All right. All right. Great choice. The casting couch miscarriage. Okay, Perfect. okay, okay. But before you get into this, I just want to say preemptively, I asked you not to tell anybody. You're taking it out of context. I didn't know he was grieving until afterwards. And also, he shouldn't have spent so much time picking off scratch-off tickets like he was buying a goddamn horse. Doesn't matter. They all lose, you fucking idiot. Plus, plus, your porn addiction caused your wife's miscarriage, you lottery-playing fuck, is more of a figure of speech than an accusation, so to speak. Um, I just don't think that's fair. Uh, Actually... This one comes to us from Pastor 
John Piper. Oh, I was kidding then, just now. As a podcast, he was kidding. Didn't tell anybody about it. (laughs) So, never. You may remember Pastor Piper from last week when we talked about his claim that watching porn with your spouse before sex is a sin. And apparently that's because Jesus could get hard before a sermon without any visual aids. (laughs) Like (laughs) a towel rack he was. (laughs) (laughs) Well,. Piper stuck with the porn theme this week, thanks to another related question from one of his listeners. I mean, when you strike gold. (laughs) Right. So, this time, the question came from a man whose wife had just miscarried a child, who asked if it was his fault for watching too much porn. And the pastor's answer was, uh, not no. His answer was (laughs) maybe. 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 According to Piper, God sometimes likes to murder fetuses because it causes, quote, a new humility and a new submission and a new faith and new purity through the pain of loss, end quote. Wow. Okay, so well, wait, maybe. wait, wait. That seems like kind of a double standard on our part because, like, we murder, like, 23 million babies and God murders one as revenge and all of a sudden he's the bad guy. I don't get it. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <I don't laughs> You know, if you if you print that up on a bumper sticker, it'll wind up on Air Force Two. See, <laughs> I'm on your side, guys. They're coming for the press eventually. I'm just laying the ground. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that was lovely from Pastor Piper, and uh, that leaves us with the New York priest and his pro-Trump video that included an aborted fetus as a featured player. Mm. So this one's about Reverend Frank Pavone, head of the Staten Island-based group called Priests for Life. And apparently he thought it would be appropriate to uh, obtain an aborted fetus somehow, uh, bring it to his church, and proceed to deliver a 44-minute political rant while posed in front of the altar with what I'm assuming was a small, bloody corpse. Because an actual aborted fetus is generally about the size of a peanut and looks nothing like a person. People have just been like, what? What, what right. do you got there? Is that a scab? So, uh, this is the doll they used for Voldemort and Harry Potter stuff. <laughs> yeah. Well, sadly, or maybe happily is the right word, I couldn't find the video, <laughs> but I'm happy. guessing he either held the thing like a baby <laughs> or fastened it to a crucifix, something like that. Oh, yeah, for dramatic effect. I get it. Seriously, though, where did he get this fetus? I- I'm asking for a friend. Who uh, needs to stay forever young. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So either way, I can't help but imagine this guy getting caught in a traffic stop at some point by the NYPD as he's on the way to the church with a dead baby and a child seat back. Step out of the car, sir. I brought this with me today to make a point and to drive in the HOV lane. They don't want to argue (laughs) about... When life begins. You could drive halfway in the HOV lane. Halfway. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, this guy thinks anybody with a functional ball sack gets to drive in the HOV lane. Yeah, so. Well, that's <laughs> true. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and in talking responsibility news tonight, I'm sorry. That's a terrible one. I apologize. Oh, for that. no, I <laughs> like it. We There's all need a lot it. to do this week. Anyway, so Richard Dawkins is basically suggesting we all throw in on a volcano layer. See, hmm. Richard, this is why everyone hates you, even when no one asks, buddy. <laughs> well, you got to stop suggesting <laughs> volcano layers. Look, but I, I don't think we should dismiss this out of hand. So, okay, just to put this in context, Dawkins penned a recent op-ed for Scientific American where he urged the nation of New Zealand to open up their borders to American and British scientists scared fuckless of the idiocy of their respective electorates. Dawkins writes, and I quote, There are top scientists in America and Britain desperate to escape the redneck bigotry of their home countries, end quote. And then points out to New Zealand that an awful lot of Nobel laureates and field medalists would really like a new home country, and all of them saw that three-part cinematic tourist brochure with the hobbits and shit and loved it. Ate it up. Not to mention, I could prepare them to have a flawless accent ahead of time so they'll blend right in. Well, there you go. (laughs) Yeah, but just remember, you can't fly there because of the pending licking charges you're like you're, you're like the george pell of going to new zealand plus you have a cough anyway right yeah <laughs> don't you have a cough can't fly like that <laughs> see <laughs> it's probably worth pointing out that if new zealand wanted to open up its borders to refugees there are probably a couple of far more humanitarian ways of doing that you know something tells me 
Family that would like to not have bombs falling through their roofs outweighs well-to-do person concerned about their funding in terms of ethical necessity. But it does bring up interesting questions about the result of having a climate change denying conspiracy theorist in charge of the country that spends the most money on science. Like how far do we just set back humanity altogether? Well, I feel like our scientists are just going to have to start tricking Trump like that uh, show with John Ritter. Like this? No, this isn't a solar panel. Did this bathroom tile turn out silver again? We'll keep working on it. Uh, uh, Thanks so much for visiting the plant. Okay, well, stop fucking around. I told you I want stuff turned into gold. Gold. (laughs) Not paying for nerd stuff if it doesn't work. (laughs) Oh, shit. And I I also think we should at least give some credence while we're discussing this story to the question of super villainry that i opened up with because i kind of like richard but if there's one guy in the atheist community that i have to deem like most likely to turn out to have been a cartoon super villain the whole time he's obviously the guy i think we can all agree you know andy wilson is a close second but dawkins is still leading the pack (laughs) to be fair though if andy wanted to blow up the moon he could have by now he managed to run a panel with tom and cecil like let's just (laughs) give credit where credit's due didn't even go over time so Richard, if you're listening and this was all like the opening of a ploy to lure the world's best scientists to your secret lair to help you with some kind of super weapon to destroy humanity, I want you to know I'm good henchman material. I look good in a unitard. I'm I'm familiar with a number of evil salutes, and I'm willing to learn more if you have a new one, if you have a novel one, and also terrible aim. So, you know, I'll, I'll email you. And while I'm doing that, we'll take a quick break and hand things over to my lovely wife, Lucinda. A man wrote the Bible. A whore is what she was. If it's a legitimate rape. Then it's a slut, right? Hey, cooking can be fun. Hey, I'm proud of a man. This week in misogyny. Ladies, we fucked up. Okay, well, white ladies. In a week that hasn't ceased to shock me, there's one shocking result that keeps echoing through my mind above all others. More than Steve birth control makes women attractive and crazy Bannon getting a key advisory role in the administration. More than Mike, what if women go get raped on purpose to get days off work pence, being the actual goddamn vice president elect. And that result is a number. 53%. 53% of white women who voted in this election thought bragging about sexual assault was not a disqualifying action to be president. 53% of white women felt that a man who earlier this year, tried to enforce mandatory funerals for abortions, was fit to be vice president. I mean, fuck, 42% of all women voted for him. 26% of Latinas voted for him. That's more than one out of four women that thought emails and WikiLeaks mattered more than a man who is on record saying they are unqualified for certain jobs due to their race. And that brings me to the we've all learned something here today moment. And if you ask me, the big takeaway from this election is that we need a shit ton more feminism, not less. Right now, there are voices, even within our own movement, that want more than anything to shut us up. See, they cry. This is what happens when you complain so much. We menfolk get pissed off and elect Donald Trump. Remember how much better for women it was before feminism? We were so much nicer then. Don't you read the news? Look how we're all treating women just because he got elected. Don't you like this better? Hasn't America truly become great again? And look, this doesn't bear out numerically. It doesn't bear out logically. It's just, well, if the only tool in your toolbox is misogyny, everything starts to look like a female. But that 53% haunts me. And I'll tell you why. To me, it's a message that 53% of white women in this country, 42% of all women in this country need to learn that they deserve better. And if you were one of them, if you didn't vote because you couldn't be bothered or if you voted third party, and yes, even if you voted for Trump, I want you to know you deserve better than what's coming. And when it does, I'll be here to tell you about it. And on that note, I'll turn things back over to Noah, Heath, and Eli. Thank you, Lucinda. And in, I guess some people are born racist news tonight. TV Christian and man who looks like Anthony Weiner's long lost Jewish father, George Pearsons, has a key demographic that Nate Silver overlooked instead of fucking an abacus or whatever it is he did. <laughs> Namely, babies. Babies, huh? Hey, Nate, what are you doing with those beads? 
Uh, pulling stuff. <laughs> pulling. <laughs> My abacus broke. I'm fixing it with string. Leave me alone. <laughs> but by the way, while we're on that subject, I feel like teachers should tell kids that that's not how you use an abacus in advance. Doesn't doesn't help all that much to tell one after the fact. I just want to throw it out there. I think awesome. we're all ready to leave that scathing atheist school tour behind us. <laughs> all ready to let that go. Anyways, last week during a live election night broadcast, Pearsons claims that when they broadcast the prayer from the previous evening into the nursery, quote, the kids were crying, the babies were crying, and when they started praying on the screen, I'm telling you the truth, I would not lie, these babies were lifting up their hands, end quote. To which his wife added, it got quiet and their little hands went up. That has never happened before. It has to be God, end quote. What? Meanwhile, that one baby who started the waves in hope of turning back on the Seattle game is fucking pissed. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> oh, come on. I got LeVon Marshall this week. N- name a team from Seattle. Andrew. Name one team from Seattle. Any sport. Sean Stin Carsmith. <laughs> Daquan Shinsmith. <laughs> Kyle Cran Sanadil. He's a kicker. <laughs> He's on the Ohio Cubs. He's on the Ohio Mindator. Cubs. You're getting this all wrong. Yeah, you're okay. I must have been <laughs> color notebook. <laughs> and finally tonight, from the appoint break file, thanks to undereducated racist people in Florida, Ohio, and Pennsylvania, whose vote counts more than mine. President-elect Copperhead will now be choosing a group of <laughs> ignorant Christian lunatics to be in charge of key government positions. Oh, boy. It's like watching Lex Luthor organize the Legion of Doom. If he was uh. stupid. If he wasn't a super <laughs> genius. Yep. Yeah. And we got the first wave of possible cabinet appointees this week. So now we get to watch in horror as Donald Trump chooses high-level administrators from the list of people who walk into a bar during the premise of a Rachel Maddow joke. Yeah. I, Wonderful. Like, multiple names on his short list literally have their own section on right wing watch. Uh, so there's a few examples of people on the short list for Trump's cabinet. As the new White House chief of staff, he's already selected Rince Priebus. That's the guy who helped Paul Ryan and Scott Walker get into politics in Wisconsin. And looks like Mr. Bean goes to Washington. Yeah, if only he talked that little. And, by the way, the number of times he's organized trips for congressmen paid for by the American Family Association to the Holy Land is more than none. Just a frighteningly high number for a White House chief of staff. Joke <sighs> about murdering him, joke. Joke <laughs> about murdering him. Joke, don't do that, joke. <laughs> so, for Secretary of State, among others, he's considering Newt Gingrich, the only House Speaker in American history to ever be disciplined by the Ethics Committee. Yep. And who looks like Dwight Schrute chose poorly. <laughs> Nonetheless, he still might become assistant to the regional manager. <laughs> Lovely. Also, a uh, fun fact about him, he wants to bring back Huack. The House of Un-American Activities. Yeah. Like, remember the, like, have you no shame? Well, no, is apparently how that ends now. McCarthyism (laughs) McCarthyism was when America was great again before. So, (laughs) perfect. All right, uh, who else do we have? Uh, For Secretary of Health and Human Services, Mike Huckabee's on the list. Uh, Health, human, health, (laughs) services. Yeah, he's doing great. Uh, For Secretary of Homeland Security, Trump's looking at Professional racist cop Joe Arpaio on the that's list for real, who just got voted out yep. for being a horrible racist. Hopefully, that's why. Yep. Um, for Interior Secretary, he's looking at Sarah Palin. Sarah Palin. Ah, uh, I, I guess she got an Audible account to study up on all the tapes, so now she's ready <laughs> or whatever. And just for the record, she's one of the four total women on any list. Yeah. Right. Remember when the Republicans had them by the binder full? Those were the days, the good old days, when people like <laughs> Mitt Romney were the people we were afraid would become president. Mitt Romney, oh. the feminist. Yep. Yeah, exactly. And Remember how mad we were about him? Remember how we were like, fucking Mitt Romney. Fucking Mitt. Heath will give you a rusty trombone for Mitt Romney <laughs> to be president right now. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> 
And finally, despite the extremely competitive nature of this group, possibly the craziest candidate for a cabinet position was potential Secretary of Education Ben Carson, (laughs) who thinks evolution is a hoax and thinks we can fund the entire U.S. government with the tax on bumper crops or (laughs) something like that, which uh, I'm assuming he was planning to store in the Great Pyramids. Um, Fortunately, he just declined the position, so that's not actually going to happen. Well, you know, they rejected his uh, proposal that all the children just share one pencil. So, you know, (laughs) that was going to be savings of plenty. (laughs) Well, I hear Eamon Bundy might be available. I don't know. (laughs) And speaking of which, it looks like the Donald could really use some help choosing his cabinet. Oh, yeah. And apparently there's literally nobody we could suggest that would make this any worse. (laughs) So let's go ahead and put those 30 seconds on the clock. Ideas for Trump appointees who would fit well with his current list. Go. Uh, I was going to make a joke about Chris Christie heading up the Department of Transportation, but then I remember (laughs) that he's actually on the short list for AG. So I'm going to go. Cry into my bong for a minute. Eli, you go. The first ever attorneys oh, general, right, one yeah. guy. Yeah. yeah. I was, I was going to go with Ivanka Trump for first lady, but I feel like we're talking <laughs> about here. Um, okay. Easy one. Carly Fiorina, head of child services. Because <laughs> she killed her daughter. She murdered her child. All right. Uh, I was thinking maybe <laughs> FDA commissioner. Martin Shkreli. <laughs> Good, sure. Too much uh, AIDS being cured. I, I feel like if, if Judge Judy doesn't wind up on the Supreme Court, I'll eat a shoe. If, if, yeah. if she's not at least floated and then tells him to go fuck himself. <laughs> Ooh, I was going to go with Judge Fudge. <laughs> <laughs> Judge Dredd. Maybe Judge maybe. Dredd. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> How about uh, for Surgeon General, um, maybe Andrew Wakefield. I mean, we need a medical outsider. I, I mean, I know you're do. making a joke and we're all supposed to laugh at everything, but that's literally the equivalent of electing Donald Trump the president. Yeah. Um, remember, back to, remember when what? this would have been a fun thing for us to do in an earlier 30 seconds? Like, Donald Trump for president. <laughs> ha ha. Now you go, he. <laughs> Something well, else he, silly. <laughs> he is allowed to call himself a president now legally, so that, that is a little different than Wakefield. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Secretary of Defense Yosemite Sam? Maybe. (laughs) Why the fuck not? All right, I I got one. Um, How about head of NASA and Secretary of Agriculture? One guy, the astronaut farmer. (laughs) Consolidate this bloated government. Uh, Mr. President, that's a a movie character. Consolidate. So (laughs) so was I. (laughs) And when we update our betting board over how many times in the cabinet selection Trump will have to be told someone is fictional, we'll close out the headlines for the night. Heath, Eli, thanks as always. (laughs) I can't can't say that. That's illegal. (laughs) Stop writing illegal things for me. To trick say. (laughs) And when we come back, we promise we'll talk about something other than our impending national claps. Something wacky. Some fun. Something legal to say on the air. (laughs) (laughs) I think if this week's racist uncles who are talking about armed revolution last week have taught us anything this week, it's that we all need to unite and come together. And it's in that spirit that this week's Blue Apron ad will include our special guest, Ben Carson. That's right. Uh, hey, Ben, how are you? I'm fantastic, Anderson. Thank you so much for inviting me. Great, great. Uh, y- you can sit down, Dr. Carson. Just take mm, a seat. Or contraire, not without my fainting couch, I'm afraid. Okay, great. So, so Ben, you just turned down the position of Secretary of Education in Trump's cabinet. I, I have to admit, that's surprising. Is it? Well, uh, yeah. In The Independent, you said... And I'm quoting your business manager here. Dr. Carson feels he has no government experience and he's never run a federal agency. The last thing he would want to do was take a position that could cripple the presidency. So, I mean, I agree, but you ran for the role of president. You were 
That's right. the top. Remember? Mm-hmm. Let me explain. I am currently having a brief moment of lucidity. Close friends and family have called me unrecognizable over the last couple of years. I should not be in government. I should not be anywhere but getting the help I so desperately need. Oh. Wow, I guess that's oh, dude, that's, that's good. I, I'm, I'm sorry, sorry gentlemen. I must have nodded off. You said something about blue aprons. Is it time for a fashion show for the colonel, dude? Just just do the ad. It it feels bad now. I know, I'm, I know. Uh, but come on, we got it. We they they paid us. Come on. Okay, okay, okay. Well, as our listeners know, Blue Apron is a food delivery service that sends fresh, pre-portioned ingredients right to your door. So you can love the way it feels and tastes to create incredible home-cooked meals with Blue Apron. And we thought it might be fun for you to give one of this week's menu choices a try. Beet and ricotta grilled cheese. These were really, really fantastic. I had them myself this week. Sounds Santa Florisius. Not um, a word, Ben. Yeah, uh, just moving past that. Anyway, um... Why don't you give it a try? Uh, chop up those beets first. Mm, I was a surgeon, you know. Yeah, yeah, I know. Um, a, a good one, I hear. Yes, yes. Now, have these beets been prepped for surgery? Wash them, bathe them, have them sign the proper forms. You know what? Never, never mind, Ben. Just, just move over to the corner. We'll have Eli do it. Where, where is, where is Eli? That's me. I'm pretending to be Ben Carson right now. Ooh, meta. The world is insane. I'm just joining in. You were already there. Okay, well, look, let, let's just try to put the ricotta on the bread here. Ooh, I'm afraid this cheese is going terribly wrong. It's supposed to be yellow and square, you see, covered in plastic. Not, you must no. always eat your plastic, my mother used to say, or she would beat us. Beat uh, us until right, we thought right, we were right. Ben Carson You know what? I, I really don't think this is the best idea. But um, check out this week's menu and get your first three meals free with free shipping by going to blueapron.com slash scathing. That's blueapron.com slash scathing. Blue Apron, a better way to cook. Do they make toast? I smell toast. (laughs) (laughs) In an age where Donald Trump is president and the entire world seems to have gone fucking crazy, it can be comforting to remember that no matter how crazy things are, they're never as crazy as the educational videos that Jehovah's Witnesses make for their kids. So in an attempt to remind you that it could always be worse, unless you're a Jehovah's Witnesses kid, we dug up a little treat for you this week in the form of a couple of god-awful minis. And to show you we're nothing if not consistent, Heath, tell us, what will we be breaking down today? Okay, well today we have a god-awful mini double feature. First, we watched Lesson 2, Obey Jehovah which is the story of a little kid who learns a valuable lesson about how the warlock who magically created the universe really hates magic. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then we watched Lesson 4, Stealing is Bad, which is about the Spanish man in your head who reminds (laughs) you that stealing is bad. (laughs) Pretty much the whole thing. And Eli, how bad were these minis? Well, if you love Pixar and they're all going to laugh at you, You will love this mini. (laughs) This is something a serial killer draws to explain how it all began. No (laughs) shit. All right. So let's start off with lesson two here. We open it with the blue sky and it words lesson two, obey Jehovah. And then we're going to hop our way into this insanity along with a cute little kid coming home from school, playing with a new toy, new little uh, Gandalf doll or something. Yeah. He's a warrior um, wizard. Sparlock. Yeah. Right. And uh, Sparlock looks like like John Ratzenberger got turned into the Monopoly guy. Almost exactly. <laughs> yeah, really. And this is this. To be fair, this is also at least a little bit homophobic in this video too. He's very clearly Sparlock. He's supposed to be dressed like a sodomite. I'm quite certain. Was like, he? <laughs> like like gay Mega Man, Dumbledore, and Tinky Winky, kind of all at the same time. If I was describing his, I have had that yeah. fantasy. Yeah, yeah, I have. I'm sorry. What were we talking about? No, and the little kid is going. He's doing the like little kid playing thing. And he's going like Sparlock, activate your magic, and it's just supposed to be that word magic lingering in the air, making us go right. wait. Magic. This kid. Uh, 
Because the mom is like, hey, 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 slow down. What do you got there? Like, she reacts like he's got a wet dildo. Like, he's like, (laughs) (laughs) silly worm. Like, that's how her performance, this animated character's performance played. And he's like, yeah, I got a, I got a magic toy. I'm, I'm a child who doesn't understand this is about to be a thing yet because I don't know the (laughs) invisible rules in your book. (laughs) And she's like, well, why don't you sit down and have a snack while I get crazy? Well, and the voice actor here, I I swear, like I have this, this playing along with a sex game, but not very enthusiastically attitude towards, towards this voice that like, you know, she's like, Oh, this is some, ridiculous shit like like i feel like this was not a jehovah's witness this was just some voice actress they hired and she's like oh my god this is the worst thing i've ever said for 25 bucks <laughs> anyway i hated mom's voice she's the worst especially when she said jehovah like yeah. that i hated it and she said like the whole thing she's ta- she sounds like that elementary school teacher explaining something really obvious and acting like you don't get it when you clearly get it it was like, and now you carry the three. Yes, I fucking know how to add. You've been explaining this for weeks. Now carry the three. What the fuck? This is every woman that's ever explained to me I'm making a scene. <laughs> oh. There's a lot of women, to be fair. All rolled into one. And, and the first thing she, she introduces is she's like, Caleb, is this toy magical? And I wanted so bad. Crazy billionaire remake of this. He's just like, no, mom, it's a toy. Do you think it's magical? It's just pretend. <laughs> Do you think it's not pretend? <laughs> What's going on, Mom? Does that Talk make you fucking this. crazy, Mom? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She says, who likes magic, Satan or Jehovah? Oh, yes, yes. And I just wanted to be like, uh, that's a false dichotomy. Well, actually, it's even worse. That's a fantasy dichotomy, you stupid <laughs> muggle. Jesus. Well, to be fair, Mom, we haven't read Satan's book. Satan might hate the fuck out of magic, too. <laughs> Well, and the scariest fucking thing about this entire video is that they quit, the kid just goes, Satan. You know, not, that's an insane person question, mom. <laughs> just, yes, I do know the answer to that question because this is a horrible world and people like us elected Donald Trump. That is by far the most depressing part of this little adventure of ours here. Well, so far, we're only a minute and 26 seconds in. <laughs> yeah, I wrote in my notes here, this animator really managed to capture an abused child's reaction to getting in trouble for rules he doesn't understand. Good job. <laughs> yeah. Right. So this is where she opens up her little book that I'm sure you can buy from a thing that they uh, also sell where she's like, who are these people? And the kid says, that's Adam and Eve. And I pictured it here in their early 900s. <laughs> yeah. Adam and yeah. Eve are not looking good here. They they look like dying Socrates in the death of Socrates, <laughs> the Hemlocks and Mother Teresa. That's what they look like. <laughs> look like the cover of a clan of the cave bear themed Guga Gilf porn. <laughs> I'm going to need that back, by the way. <laughs> in a rough week, I need to let out some stress. Yeah, no, I got you. I got you. I'm almost done with it. They look like a Guns N' Roses show now. <laughs> Not so great. real. <laughs> I oh. So now we get the like they made God very sad, and this is fucking terrifying. This whole section here is like a a child actor on SVU doing the like we can't say rape on TBS thing. Like God got very <laughs> sad with them, and when he <laughs> disobeys Jehovah, he gets very sad. And when God gets sad, he touches you on the no no button. It's just fucking <laughs> horrifying. Now, to be fair, when I get sad, I do curse infinite humans to painful childbirth and predestined hell for eternity, but I can't actually do I just curse them to that. I can't actually do it. But I mean, if I could, I would. I've seen him do it. I saw him go through airport security, and those were his exact words right when he got (laughs) on the other side. (laughs) My words were way worse. Childbirth. Where's the bathroom? (laughs) Childbirth. (laughs) And then we get this, like, everything turns dark scene. (laughs) Where so a weird. snake shows up to tempt him with the Sparlock toy. <laughs> so stupid. Satan is literally tempting a child to become evil with, like, the, the toy from a Happy Meal. Yes. Come to the dark side. Here's a, a UPC from a cereal box. <laughs> if you collect 999 more, you can get a, a pencil case, a magical <laughs> evil pencil. What the fuck? 
<laughs> he's he's working less and less hard as he goes. He's like, Trump's president now. I don't really have to work at this anymore, guys. <laughs> so, yeah, Harry Potter toys are the cursed apples of their day, according to this video. So they go to the, like, the kid's going to, like, ceremonially throw it away, a la goldfish funeral scene. Yeah, he's throwing his toy in the garbage. It's like Kirk Cameron throwing out a computer that he thinks is like physically full of porn inside. <laughs> I really wanted mom to make him beat the shit out of the toy like the copier in office space. Yeah, like, right, right. Now let's it. chop his head off. Let's yeah. let's strap a firecracker to it, son, or someone else will get it. <laughs> Burn it as God intended. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Seems to me like you're suffering Sparlock to live. <laughs> 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 and she basically goes, oh, Jehovah is very happy. Jehovah loves you for obeying him. What a terrifying <laughs> fucking sentence. Can you imagine? Right. I walked out right now into my living room and I was like, darling, I love you for obeying me. You don't get to hear live as I coughed my balls out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> And exactly. And look, that is not how love works. Like sending that message to children, the message that this thing sends, which is like, you know, love is a thing that is contingent on obedience. That's a terrifying message, but it's all set to the sounds and animations of Wii Sports Resort. So it's really hard to decide how to feel about this. Right. Because she immediately goes, hey. You know what I want to do? I want to go pretend that I didn't just abuse you. And he's like, me too. I want normalcy. I, I crave normalcy. <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> and now that we've learned the all-important lesson about placating the magical genocidal space wizard with our doll selection, we can move on to a lesson from the J-dubs uh, that they consider at least to be two spaces less important than that last one. And that would be lesson four. <laughs> Stealing is bad. Now, this video is going to start us off in a supermarket where we meet uh, stoned nine-year-old Caleb once again wearing a Calvin shirt this time. And he's bored. Looks like he could use a deadly dose of niacin. I'm just saying, yes, I know, I know, different cult, but they all sort of blend together. <laughs> so, yeah, so mom calls him over and he passes a display of lollipops upon which he ejaculates. Yeah, but not exactly lollipops like you're probably picturing, because apparently these people haven't seen a lollipop since 1930. Yeah. Like, what year do they think it is? Like, I feel like Al Jolson in blackface is going to tap dance their bags to the car. Like, what the fuck's happening? I'm because sure we'll America come across the J-Dub video where that happens. I, I'm not, we, we, let's not rule that possibility out. But yeah, he lusts over the, the lollipops and he grabs a, double armful and then his mom says we hear mom off screen who's probably about to hang herself because she finally saw the video she did the first time say no candy Caleb and I wrote in my notes are they not allowed candy I know they don't get birthdays I literally don't know what crazy things j are and aren't allowed to have <laughs> well at the very least Caleb's not allowed to have any candy today but as he's setting all of the lollipops down he holds one back and has a dastardly thought and, and I'm thinking to myself, this is a ridiculously difficult shoplift to pull off. I mean, the size of this lollipop, think gum, candy bars, that kind of <laughs> shit, Caleb. Cigarettes. Much right, easier. Because of the way this is animated, it looks like Caleb is genuinely considering shoving that lollipop up his ass. He puts <laughs> it like back. Exactly and it's what supposed happened. to be like in the back pocket. <laughs> but it very much, I've had that moment. And yes, I'm not allowed to go to shop right anymore. But that's not the point here. <laughs> what are we talking about? What happens in the movie? Yeah. <laughs> Caleb's literally uh, planning to keister a lollipop. It's the size of a ping pong paddle. Well, right, it's the right. crazy <laughs> old lollipop. Like, go with a blow pop, dude. That's delightful. <laughs> this is ridiculous. It's about but breathing, luckily, Caleb. luckily, <laughs> right before he anally penetrates himself with the, uh, with the lollipop, the, the Hispanic man in his head <laughs> speaks up, asking if he really wants to do this. Yeah, yeah. Apparently, Jehovah is the Dos Equis guy, and <laughs> when he talks wrote, to you. Is that you, Cheech Marin? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't always threaten children, but when I do, <laughs> I prefer J-Dub's kids uh, about to sodomize themselves with lollipops. That's Terrifying. not the first time Heath has said this on that, that on this show. <laughs> All right, I'm recycling lines, whatever. <laughs> 
And I love to. Okay, so here's the formulation of the question. When the Dos Equis guy shows up in his head, he goes, if you steal, will you be Jehovah's friend? And I'm like, what's with this friend shit? Like, you're going to show up at God's house for the game. He's going to be in there turning the lights off with all the angels and shit. Just, just wait, just wait. He'll go. Like, yeah, you awkwardly run into him. Oh, I thought you said you weren't going to the beach today, God. Yeah, I am. Um, oh, you know, omnipresent. Karen. So, <laughs> yeah, but luckily, Caleb makes the right choice. And so he doesn't steal the lollipop. I know you guys were in suspense there. I wanted to, like, build it up for you a little more. But no, Caleb does not rape himself with the. It's not rape when you do it to yourself. Caleb does not. You can be, I guess. Never mind. Yeah, this is dark, on how much dark, dark territory we're going. Playing. It's been a weird <laughs> week here at the show. <laughs> but I just want to point out that, like, at the end of this video, this kid does not like know why it's wrong to steal lollipops. He doesn't have like an innate understanding of what's wrong with theft. He just thinks a wizard is going to torture him later if he does, and that's what this is. That's like what they're going for. Absolutely. This is not why stealing is wrong. This is the voice you heard coming out of your lamp disapproves. The yeah. voice, <laughs> right. And by, the, by this by this short's own logic, if the voice coming out of the lamp was like, kill your sister, Caleb, kill your sister. And remember, leave dangerously. I'd be like, OK, yeah, sure. Why not? That's the rules. <laughs> All right, well, rather than burn our thumbs in the molten iron core of the earth by trying to point them far enough down to express our dissatisfaction with this clip, I'm simply going to ask you this. If these were lessons two and four, what was the connective tissue here? What the fuck was lesson three? Ooh, uh, mm. I'm going to go with learning about animals in which mom drowns a box of kids' kittens for being disobedient <laughs> while dad watches. <laughs> <laughs> strokes himself uh all right uh lesson three lesson three um there was nothing behind your ear satan had the coin in his hand the whole time <laughs> i have no idea spoiler and 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 with that we'll bring god awful minis to the close but uh, for those cross podcast traditionalists among you we'll leave you with the breakfast club close jehovah's witnesses not really allowed to sing songs Jehovah started taking Prozac when J.K. Rowling got about $850 million for her soul. Sparlock went on to inspire the other toys of the dump with his satanic promises of vengeance. Eli's Rule 34 Tumblr of the mom in these videos still only has one subscriber. <laughs> it's me. I'm the subscriber. Oh, thank you. Before we fade to black this week, I wanted to let everybody know that we did have a new episode of The Skeptocrat out this week. If you missed that, might want to double check your feed. We also switched hosts since the last episode, so on the off chance that you didn't see the new episode come up, you might have to unsubscribe and resubscribe. Turns out we had a lot of bitching to do this week. Anyway, that's all the blasphemy we've got for you tonight, but we'll be back in 10,022 minutes with more. If you can't wait that long, be on the lookout for a brand new episode of our sister show's hot friend, God Awful Movies, debuting at 7 a.m. Eastern Time on Tuesday morning. Help you steal your nerves for all the religious family you're going to have to deal with. And if even that's too long to wait, be sure to subscribe to us on YouTube for bonus nuggets of scathiasm throughout the week. Obviously, the show would ring hollow and incomplete if I neglected to thank Heath Enright for finding the funny in even this. I need to thank Lucinda Lusions for not ripping the dick off of anything. And I need to thank Eli for volunteering in case she decided to. It's kind of his thing, apparently. It's probably a Jewish thing. I don't know. I also want to thank Brad from the Writer's Beard Podcast for providing this week's Farnsworth quote. If you want to give him a listen, you'll find a link on the show notes for this episode. But most of all, of course, I need to thank this week's best people. Shane, Eric, James, Randy, Roger, Theo, Brian, Stephen, Zachary, Tom, Callie, Janet, I Spy, Dennis, Atheist, Bug, Matthew, Theon, Eric, Mark, and Mary, Munty, the Funk Monkey, Richard, Patrick, Matt, Other, Stephen, Jason, Richard, Greg, and Nate. Shane, Eric, James, Randy, Roger, Theo, and Brian, whose erections ruined a lot of people's supermoon viewing plans this week. Stephen, Zachary, Tom, Callie, Janet, I Spy, and Dennis, whose genitals should never be unveiled without trumpets and choral accompaniment. Atheist Bug, Matthew, Theon, Eric, Mark, and Mary, Munty, the Funk Monkey, and Richard, who are so intelligent that if any one of them walked into a Trump cabinet meeting, the average IQ would reach 100. And Patrick, Matt, other Stephen, Jason, Richard, Greg, and Nate, who can't really be blamed for how many voters assume we meant their dicks when we reminded them to go to the polls. Together, these 28 individuals, couples, godless insects, and funk monkeys have helped to thaw the solid ice core in which my heart's been embedded since about 
9 p.m. last Tuesday by giving us money. Not everybody has the superior genitals and intellects it takes to give us money, but if you think you're up to the challenge, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash scathingatheist, whereby you'll earn early access to an extended ad-free edition of every episode, or you can make a one-time donation by clicking on the donate button on the right side of the homepage at scathingatheist.com. And if you'd like to help, but you've invested all your money in long-term seed banks, I get it. I totally get it. You can also help us a ton by leaving us a five-star review on iTunes, sharing the show with a friend, or getting our logo tattooed on your face. Whichever of those three options seemed like the least trouble to you is the one you should do. If you have questions, comments, or death threats, you'll find all the contact info on the contact page at scathingatheist.com. All the music used in this episode was written and performed by yours truly, and yes, I did have my permission. One second, I'm going to let this ambulance go by. I bet the person in there is dead. <laughs> What the fuck? (laughs) (laughs) The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle in a Thunderstorm, LLC, copyright 2016, all rights reserved.